Hello all and welcome back to what I'd like to say is the final video of my 1978 Honda Z50 build. I didn't think I'd be making this video, but here we are. So for those that follow the channel, we restored my Z50 1978 Honda and it was good but it wasn't quite perfect so since starting the blue ct70 as you can see behind me um it's made me realize i need to make this thing better so i've got the engine here from the z50 and we're going to freshen it up with some of the things i should have done when i first built it so in today's video we're going to be piecing back together again the z50 and talking why i'm changing these bits for those that are aware, I have also got a 1969 blue CT70 on the go for restoration. And doing that and starting it made me realise that this bike wasn't quite good enough. You saw me put it together, I painted a lot of bits myself, and I just want to go back and make it that bit better. And the first thing on that list for me was the cases. Um, I needed a new magneto side to make it look just so much better and I also wanted to get the clutch side painted professionally. Um, I've touched on it before but when you paint at home it's never the same unless you've got the setup, the spray booth and all of the equipment you're always making a compromise. So I had a few bits sent off to get repainted and look at them. It speaks for itself. It is so much nicer having brand new paint that justifies the quality and the rest of the bike. Alongside these freshly painted cases, I've also opted to replace some bolts that weren't quite up to my standard. So, new zinc plated bolts on the head side, so the cylinder head studs, uh, the manifold. I just wanted to get some shiny hardware in there because it really does make a big difference. Also, a small thing, the oil filler cap, they go yellowy and horrible so a brand new one just finishes off the side of the engine right guys this engine is starting to look good we've got the new honda side case makes a massive difference i showed you that compared to the old one we have got a repainted clutch cover something i didn't do the first time but it's so important, it just makes it look so much better. We have got a new dipstick, a new cam bolt there, and a few small bolts to dress the top up. So it's looking really, really nice. Next up, we have wheels to do. So let's talk about these. I'm sure you guys remember, we actually decided to paint these ourselves when we first did the restoration. Um, I've learned a lot since then, one of them things being unless you have the correct setup and the right paint, the right tools, you never get the perfect job and I, I want this to look really good. If you notice when you spray at home, you almost get like a soft paint, um, it's just not the same quality. So we have stripped down on the wheels along with everything else. We've had these painted in cloud silver, same colour as the side case and now we're going to reassemble them. We've got fresh zinc plated bolts, they all went sent off so the original bolts zinc plated new paint and we're gonna throw them back together. So this is my second time actually rebuilding a set of wheels. I captured the footage on the first time, but now we've obviously got this fresh paint, they're going back together. Uh, I've managed to save the bearings and keep them nice, but we have got new seals all round, which is important because as soon as you take them out, you can damage them. So it's nice to know there's no chance of crap getting in your bearings. And I'm sure there are some more graceful ways to fit bearings, but a hammer does the trick for me. It's nice and easy, and with these soft aluminium housings, as long as it's centered, you have no issues. Following that, we get the outer side of the hub all sorted, and then one small thing which caught me out was the paint in the threaded holes. Obviously, a small bit of overspray and the lacquer fills the holes out, so Run a tap through those made assembly way easier so we could just get it together and then tighten it up with the ratchet. And if you haven't noticed, we also have 
had all of the bolts zinc plated. Now you can buy new ones, but with these old Hondas, you get the markings on the bolts and it just looks a load better. So saving the bolts is a really nice touch and I'm sure the keen enthusiasts and specialists will notice the difference. For the rear wheel, it is very much the same process. The bearings are similar and the seals are slightly different, but it all goes together very smoothly and we are getting closer to having wheels ready to go back on the bike. And that guys is a set of wheels all back together bar the obviously putting the drum brake in which just dropped in but look how nice that paint is look how nice those bolts are it is way better and just yeah the finishing touch so now they are done we're gonna take the frame down there and hopefully plop it on top of the engine and start working on getting the rest of it together now in my head the thought of putting this on was very easy in reality it did prove to be much harder um, the frame tank and all that is reasonably heavy but the worst part is getting the bolts lined up into that engine with great difficulty we have the bike on the bench this just makes it a load easier for getting into bits not bending down the only downside is because you fix on the side step or this the step you cannot fit that so you've done bolt it lift it down and do the rest but way easier nicer height and yeah get these other bits bolted up with the bike up top now we can tighten up those engine bolts and snug them down and then move to just connecting everything up so the carburetor gets connected our ht lead and our freshly zinc plated air filter so i left this before and had it vapor blasted but actually it needs to be zinc plated it looks so much better and was a bit of an eyesore with the rest of the bike for fueling i had a old fuel filter and some non-oem fuel line i've opted for a kataco filter and some proper fuel line this stuff lasts way longer doesn't perish is much more flexible and is just the right thing to fit to your bike Next up is wheel fitment, so we start on the rear end, get our spacers in there, get it all lined up and drop through our zinc plated axle. I did think about buying some new ones, but actually getting them plated is way cheaper and as mentioned, we get to keep the original bolt. Once you get that rear wheel in, it allows you to fit your chain, so with some adjustment on the sliders, we reinstall the same chain and obviously back on with this cover as that came off to fit it. Another one of the things that was getting fixed during this build was black powder coat. So the gear shifter was sprayed by hand last time. That's now been powder coated along with a few other things. So freshly powder coated shifter and a new rubber boot go onto the bike and just finish off the left hand side of that engine. It's now time to move to the front end of the bike and get this wheel back on. Obviously the wheel's rebuilt, we've got a nice zinc plated axle and that's all gonna slide together to finish that front end off. Zinc plated bolts, like I say, finishes the bike off and something I wish I did in the first place. Wheels on the bike, we're now gonna look at the braking. So as you saw there, we had the front lever and the rear brake pivot along with this brake pedal. Everything has been refinished, whether it be powder coat, zinc plating, we have given these parts a lease of life. So we slide on this brake lever and then go to fit the brake joiner, your brake link, your brake lever. You can see shiny parts, looks really, really good. Looks like it's come out of the factory. So really quick and easy to assemble and we have got a rear and front brake on the bike. So guys, what we have here is the original exhaust from this bike. So 
Upon first attempt at restoration, we painted this up and it came out really nice. I cleaned all the exhaust down, I kind of straightened it all out and it was worth saving. It's a nice original exhaust, why would you not? But one thing I always kind of regretted and I'll stick up close on screen now, this chrome plate was never quite perfect. We've got some imperfections here. I polished it, I buffed it. Realistically, it even needed re-chroming or we needed a new one. Now, chroming is great, but it is expensive and I worked out pretty much, one second. It was about 60 quid to have it re-chromed or we could get a brand spanking new one for about the same money. So I've decided to get a new one, which will make a massive difference to this bike. One of the biggest things on the side of the bike and will just make it pop. So let's do a side by side and I'll show you exactly why we got a new one. This clip right here guys shows exactly why I went for this new exhaust guard. Look how dull and perished and worn out that old one is. So we're gonna pull that off and get it out of the way. We don't want that anymore. We've got this fresh chrome part to go on. As you can see underneath, it does look really good. We did paint that before and now we're gonna throw on the new exhaust shield with some nice stainless bolts and stainless washers. It's now been a few times that I have fitted an exhaust and one of the things I've learned is to always stick down a rag on the top of your side case. It's so easy to drop the exhaust or catch it and put a mark in it. So always do that. And as you can see here, we have got the side step all freshly powder coated and zinc plated ready to go back together. As we wrestle that kickstand onto the side step we are coming towards the end of parts that need to be refitted uh, it's been a fun journey getting this bike perfect and i'm very glad we went ahead and fixed these last few bits that guys brings us to the end of the revival assembly but i'm not going to leave you hanging there it's going to be a few days but we're going to get some oil in this thing we're going to get it down on the ground We've got the final side step to fit, and then I'm gonna get a video of me taking this thing up the road. There is no official YouTube footage of that. So yeah, let's fast forward to hopefully a sunny, dry day where this thing is running again. And guys, the stars have aligned. We have a nice, dry, even sunny day, and we're gonna pull the bike out and do these last few bits to get it roadworthy. So first thing is sticking some air in these tyres and getting them pumped up and then we're going to go ahead, get a towel underneath the bike and fill it up with some fresh Castrol oil, 800ml of that in the side case and we're going to prime it up by kicking it over a few times. Not essential but it's nice to get some oil moving around the engine before you fire it up. With oil in the engine we're going to get some fuel in the tank so we have everything we need to get it running and then we are in a position to go ahead, flip yep, the fuel, fuel on, in. throw the choke on, and give this thing a kick. And that, guys, is going to be the last from me. I want to end this video on this bike running and me taking up the road. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I will catch you in the next one very soon. Enjoy, take it easy, and I'll see you soon.